Hi there, this is Mr. Deulis. Uh, welcome to AP Physics 1, and I'm going to go over some of the basic fundamentals. We're going to start from the ground level, making sure that our math skills are where they need to be. So I'm just going to be reviewing some, uh, some algebra, maybe a little bit of trig here, and just going over some of the, the basic things that we need. Mind you that uh, with this, I'm not going to cover too many of the concepts just yet until we get into the class. So I'm just going to cover uh, for the summer work, I'm going to cover the uh, the math stuff that needs to happen and uh, things like uh, vectors. I'm not going to cover too much. I will a little, uh, perhaps more, just some of the terminology. I'm not going to cover it as much until we actually get into the classroom. So with that, let me go over some examples of some basic skills that you need. If I give you an example of an equation where we have f, and there's going to be a lot of variables here that you don't know, and there's no worries behind that but I have f is equal to g times m1 times m2 over r squared. So here's a, an equation. This is an equation we use in physics later on in the year. I actually am purposely using it because I don't really want you to be familiar with the variables. I just want you to look at them as if they're just something you can maneuver around algebraically. So if I have this equation and I need to solve for r, what is r? We need to manipulate those variables around without numbers. And that is absolutely 100% a skill that you must know how to do. First off, notice that the g could be up in the numerator. It is effectively in the numerator. There's a couple ways I can solve this. First, uh, I can divide each side by g, m1, and m2. So I can just simply do that. So that way, I'm going to have 1 over r squared. So I simply divided each side by the numerator. But something needs to stay in that numerator, and so the 1 does, in fact, stay. The next step here is that uh, since I'm solving for r, I need to take the reciprocal of each side. So I'm going to essentially flip each side. So g times m1 times m2 over f is going to be equal to r squared over 1, which is the same thing as simply r squared. And then lastly, let me actually shift this stuff upwards so I can get some more space. Lastly, I simply take the square root of each side. So I'm going to say that r is equal to the square root of g times m1, m2 over f. And that is my final answer. Uh, it's not the only approach I could have taken. I could have uh, started off by multiplying each side by r squared, putting that over, over here, and then dividing each side by f, and then taking the square root. Uh, it's essentially the same thing. So more than one way to, to approach that. Let me also express one other thing. m1 and m2 are two different variables. So m1 refers to object number 1, and m2 refers to object number 2. And you will see that annotation very frequently, so please do not get those mixed up at any time. All right, so that is one straightforward example of how to manipulate the variable. All right, let me go over another example. Again, I'm just going to manipulate the variables a little bit. I have started off with two equations. I'm simply saying that u is equal to mgy and k is equal to 1 half m v squared. If I now make the expression where I'm going to say that in this particular scenario, I'm going to say that u is equal to k. And so I'm going to simply, and this is exactly the way I should be structuring my work, is in a, in a vertical form. Uh, please do not go horizontally. Uh, try and avoid that as much as you can in this sort of way. So I've got uh, mgy in place of the u, and I have the 1 half mv squared in place of the k. If I want to solve for v, apparently I can't spell the word for, if I want to solve for v, then I'm going to, let's see, multiply each side by 2, and I'll do the step by step, no skipping steps here. So I have 2 mgy is equal to uh, 1 half v squared. Oh, excuse me. I just got rid of the, uh, the 1 half. Excuse me for that. 
So I multiply each side by 2, uh, gets rid of the 1 half on the right side, and I have uh, 2 on the left. You also can notice at this moment in time that uh, we have an m on the left and the right. They are the same m, and so we could simply cancel that out. You'll notice that it's the same thing as dividing each side by m. They cancel, cancel here, and so the m will go away. But typically, you should learn to recognize this right off the bat. The m's cancel, they will go away without having to work out too many steps. And then lastly, we'll take the square root. And so v is equal to the square root of 2gy. I'm going to box this one in. I'm going to make it a relatively pretty box even. Because this is an equation that we're going to see a fairly decent amount of. So keep this in your memory banks. Okay. Uh, it doesn't work in all scenarios by any means. It only works in this particular scenario where we can say this. Again, we'll get to a greater meaning for all the variables later, uh, but this is a, a perfect example of what we'll need to do later. All right, now I'd like to go over something with you known as dimensional analysis. So here I've got an example where I have an equation and I have some uh, variables with which I've given you the values of and one that is an unknown. So with that, Let's solve for that unknown. It's not so much the number that I'm worried about. It's keeping track of the units that I actually want to teach you right now. That's the dimensional analysis, is keeping track of the dimensions, the units. And so don't worry about the equation and what the numbers and what the units are just yet too much, although you probably get it a little. I'll cover that a little bit more later. Let's just look at the units and plug these numbers into the equation. So since here I have v, the equation is, is that a is equal to v minus v sub 0, or otherwise said as v naught. Uh, it's just easier to say v naught rather than v sub 0. So it's v minus v naught divided by delta t. The delta, that right there, means change. That's simply what it means. It means the change in so it's the change in t. How much did t change by? Again, that's not something we need to worry about too much right now, but it actually, as you can imagine, stands for time, and that's going to be a change of time of one second. So let's plug in those values. We have uh, v is going, in fact, let me uh, grab this equation and move it over. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to say that uh, it's going to be 5 meters per second minus the uh, 3 meters per second, which is v naught, and divided by the change in time, which is 1 second. And so that's our, our acceleration. Well, with that, we've got a change of 2 meters per second divided by 1 second. And what I would like to make clear here, this is what makes this dimensional analysis, is that... Whoops, this stuff here, the numbers, go in your calculator. That seems pretty silly and redundant to say, but it's true, right? So here we have the answer for that when you put it into your calculator. Or, well, 2 divided by 1 is 2. You don't need to put it in your calculator, but nonetheless. But what happens to the rest of it? Well, the rest of this stuff must go somewhere. It can't just disappear. Do not give me an answer if it if you don't give me the units. I need the units as well. It is rare, but it does happen, where there are certain things that don't have units. In that case, you wouldn't put any units since there aren't any, but virtually all cases will have units. So what are the units? It's meters per second per second. So the units are going to be meters, excuse me, it's going to be meters per second per second. And you may recognize that since we have two different divisions within the same sort of function here, we can actually take this and shift it up into the denominator of the one above. And so this is the same thing as 2 meters per second squared. This is the same thing as meters per second squared, which is a crucial thing for you to uh, to be able to recognize. So that is dimensional analysis, keeping track of the units, canceling them out as if they were variables, 
but we do have to keep them separate from the numbers themselves. Here's another dimensional analysis example. I'm giving you the equation where f is equal to ma, those are my variables. f is equal to 6 kilograms times meters per second squared. m is equal to 3 kilograms, and we want to find what a is. So the first thing we must do is take our equation and manipulate the variables to solve for a. So divide each side by m, and we have that f divided by m is equal to a. In fact, here, let's write the a over here. And so with that, I'll just continue vertically down with my, with my work. And so the force is going to be the 6 kilograms times meters per second squared, and divide that by 3 kilograms. You will notice that the uh, kilograms will cancel. We have the numbers themselves right here. Those go into the calculator, or in your brain if you prefer. So 6 divided by 3, that will give us a value of 2. And the units, well, the kilograms cancel, so we are left with meters per second squared. And if you recall, that is the same thing as meters per second per second. And sometimes it's uh, valuable for you from a conceptual basis to understand that. So it's 2 meters per second per one second. And I'll go more into what that is later. All right, so my last little bit of math review is going to be a trig review. So with that, let's say that I have a, a triangle. So that way I have the hypotenuse has a value of 5, and it has two legs of this triangle, so it's a right triangle. If the angle here is 37 degrees, we want to know what the values of the x and y components. So if this is a vector that is equal to 5, so the hypotenuse is a vector of some kind, and don't worry about that term just yet, I'll get into that more later. What are the x and y components of that vector? So the x component, we don't know it just yet, and the y component, we don't know it just yet. So let's determine how to find that. Well, let's look at the, uh, the x component to start. So if you remember, we have Sokotoa. And in this case, we're going to need the cosine, where the cosine of angle theta, that is some arbitrary angle, in this case, that's going to be the 37 degrees. So in place of that little theta symbol, is going to go our 37 degree angle. Cosine theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent side is going to be this side here. It's the side that is touching the angle, but not the hypotenuse. In blue over here, we've got the opposite side. It's not touching the angle, and it's not the hypotenuse. It seems a little over uh, simplified to say it that way, but that's the point. So with that, we want to find what the adjacent side length is. We know what the hypotenuse is. We know what this hypotenuse is. We know what theta is. Let's find the adjacent side. So with that, we need to multiply each side by the hypotenuse, just like it's an algebraic function. So the cosine of angle theta times the hypotenuse is going to equal the adjacent side. The other way to express this, let me backtrack a little, is to say that cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is v sub x divided by v. And again, multiply each side by v. So that means that the cosine of angle theta times v is equal to v in the x direction. And that we can go ahead and plug in those numbers. So we've got the cosine of 37 degrees times the vector length, which is 5. And that will give us a value of like 3.99. Let's just say it's 4. So the value here is 4. And you probably see exactly where I'm getting at. The other value is going to be 3 because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. But let's actually show it. Let's actually show where that comes from. So in this case, we have the so. 
it's the sine of the angle theta is equal to the opposite, the OPP, you know me, divided by the hypotenuse. And again, we can replace those variables from our triangle. So the opposite side is going to be the vector in the y direction. And the hypotenuse is going to simply be the vector along its direction. Multiply each side by v, and we get v in the y direction. So that brings me that sine of angle theta times v is equal to the velocity in the y direction. And shrink that down out of the way a little bit. All right. Now, let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. We have the sine of angle 37 degrees times the vector length of 5. That is going to give us a value of 3. I believe it's 3.001 or something along those lines. So 3 is our vertical length. It is a, our vector length in the y direction. So we've broken it down into its x and y components, which is a skill that we really need to really need in physics. It's very important. It comes up uh, many times. The trig that you need isn't going to be terribly more complex than this. The only uh, way that it gets much more complex than this is when you're looking at uh, multiple triangles. And when you have to go backwards, so rather than having the angle and finding the sides, the length sides, or sides of the length, lengths of the sides, excuse me, instead going the other way around. So let's do one quick example of that. Let's say I know the opposite side. Let me get rid of all this. Let me try that again. So let's say that I know the vector length along the, its hypotenuse. I know the y component of it. What is the angle theta? I want to know what the angle, question mark there, that's what I was going for. What is that angle theta? And so, again, we're going to deal with the sine. Uh, so we're going to say that the since, again, that uh, the sine of angle theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be uh, the vector in the y direction divided by the vector along the path. We want to solve for theta in this case. And so what we need to do is it's you can't just divide out sine. It doesn't work that way. Instead, what you must do is take the inverse sine. And you take the inverse sine of everything that's on the other side of the equation. So that's going to be the uh, y component divided by the, uh, the vector length. And that's going to equal theta. Write that a little cleaner. There we go. That's going to be theta. And so that means that if you go into your calculator and put in uh, usually the second button, and then hit sign. You will see the inverse sign button there, and that's going to be uh, three divided by five, and that will give you the angle of 37 degrees. All right, so that's most all the trig that you will need, and it's not going to get too much more complex than that. If there is anything else that's more complex, we can certainly go over it, but uh, there really isn't too much more than that. So that's going to do it for my uh, math review for physics, and uh, we will continue on. All right, have a good one.